and welcome back to Pronunciation with Emma or welcome if you're brand new to my channel. In this lesson, we're going to be analysing a text together and looking at features of connected speech. I will be reading a text at normal speed, then I will slow it right down so you can hear where I connect everything together and then we're going to analyse it and talk about it. I will assume that you know something about connected speech already, but if you're completely new to it and you don't know any rules and you don't know what connected speech is, I will leave some videos linked in the description for you. I highly recommend you watch those first and then you come to this lesson. Now before we get started, if you're interested in improving your English and taking private one-to-one -one lessons with a teacher, then why not check out Preply? Private one-to-one -one lessons are one of the most effective ways to improve your language skills in any language. And with Preply's filter options, you can find the perfect teacher to help you. As well as offering private lessons with teachers from around the world, Preply also has many different activities which you can do in between your lessons. You can do these activities to learn something new, to practice an already existing skill, to do some homework maybe, to impress your teacher, or to prepare for your next lesson. Preply also tracks your progress so you can see how much you are improving and you know exactly what you need to do to improve and move on to the next level. They also have a level test so you can see exactly what level you have and what you need to do to progress to the next level. You can take lessons at any time and you can book your lessons using the Preply website or app. I also have a special gift for you and that's 50% off your first lesson on Preply by using the code EMMA50. So use that code to get 50% off your first lesson. I'm also on Preply so you can book a lesson with me, though my availabilities are incredibly limited because I am a busy bee. <laughs> but please don't worry, there are over 32,000 other teachers waiting to help you. So. Go to the link in my description, click on it, it will take you to the Preply website, find a teacher who you like, use the code EMMA50 to get 50% off your first lesson and let's start working towards your language goals. Thank you Preply for sponsoring this video, now let's start with the analysis. So this is the text that we're going to look at together, it's called Emma in Spain, it's about my own life experience and I have written this very very carefully to highlight certain features of rapid speech such as assimilation and connected speech. So we're going to talk about those things together. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to read it first just at a normal speed, then I will read it slowly, you can hear then how I connect everything together and then we're going to go through the analysis together. Feel free to also use this as a shadowing activity so you can listen, pause and repeat or you can listen and repeat and follow the text without pausing, whatever you want to do. So let's get started with reading it. Emma in Spain Around this time, 10 years ago, I left my home country for the first time in my life. I was thinking about going to Canada or the USA. But no. Instead, I moved to Spain during the second year of my degree to study there. I studied in Tarragona, a city in Catalonia. Originally, I was only supposed to go for one term, but the coordinator messed up and accidentally put one year on the form. My first semester there was tough. I felt like I didn't really fit in. The other students used to ask me if I wanted to go out, but I didn't want to. In the second semester, I decided to make some friends with some local Catalan girls. They all showed me some very interesting things about the culture and I really enjoyed my second semester. After my year was up, I had to move back to England to finish my degree. Now, 10 years later, I'm back in Spain and living in my dream city, Barcelona. Now we're going to read through it slowly. Emma in Spain. Around this time, 10 years ago, I left my home country for the first time in my life. I was thinking about going to Canada or the USA, but no. Instead, 
I moved to Spain during the second year of my degree to study there. I studied in Tarragona, a city in Catalonia. Originally, I was only supposed to go for one term, but the coordinator messed up and accidentally put one year on the form. My first semester there was tough. I felt like I didn't really fit in. The other students used to ask me if I wanted to go out, but I didn't want to. In the second semester, I decided to make some friends with some local Catalan girls. They all showed me some interesting things about the culture and I really enjoyed my second semester. After my year was up, I had to move back to England to finish my degree. Now, 10 years later, I'm back in Spain and living in my dream city, Barcelona. Now, I just want to quickly mention that if you heard me connecting things in different ways compared to how I read it at normal speed and uh, slower speed, then just know you're not crazy. Sometimes we can connect things in different ways depending on the speed that we are speaking, depending on our accents, where we're from, the context, what we're talking about and so on. So. If you hear like, oh, Emma, I felt like you connected that bit and you didn't connect it the first time you read it, just know that that's normal. <laughs> a person can read the same text twice at the same speed and connect it slightly differently. Just know that you're not going crazy if you're hearing linking and not hearing it. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so now it's time for the analysis part. As I mentioned, I'm not gonna go through the rules and things in great detail here. If you want the rules in more detail, they are in the videos below, linked in the description. I'm just gonna go through and analyze it and talk about some of the connected speech and assimilation features and so on. So starting with the first part, around this time, so you'll notice that I am not pronouncing this D, around this time. I'm connecting these two together as well around this time. I'm not stopping with this time. So it's not around this time. We're connecting them together around this time. 10 years ago. So we've got that nice n sound. 10 years ago. Years ago. We're going to take that final consonant sound and move it over to the start of the next word because it starts with a vowel. So all together here we have around this time 10 years ago. I left my home country. We're going to remove this T. We're going to remove this T because we have consonant T consonant. So if at the end of the first word we have consonant T, we can remove that T if the next word starts with another consonant sound. We also do this with the sound D. So if you have a consonant D consonant, then we can remove that D at the end of a word as well. You'll see how I do it later. So I left my home country. I left my. I left my home country for the first time. We're removing this again because it's consonant T consonant consonant T consonant. It follows the same rule. For the first time in, we've got the consonant vowel link here, we're just going to move that consonant over to the beginning of the next word. In my life, what you'll notice here with this n is I'm not saying in my life, I'm changing it to in my, in my life. So this here becomes a m in my and we're linking it together so this can happen sometimes with t d and n at the end of words when we have another consonant sound coming after it so for example uh in my becomes in my in my in my life i was thinking so this sound here was if i pronounce it with that 
a strong form, so I'm using the weak form was, okay? Was is with a z. If we look in the dictionary, it's a z. But what can happen is when the next word starts with a voiceless sound, instead of saying was thinking, we soften this, we change it to an unvoiced equivalent, we change it to s was thinking, was thinking. I was thinking, I was thinking about, we're going to move that over, that consonant over, about going to Canada. So going to Canada or the USA. Canada or the, so we've got a, uh, we're not saying Canada or, we're not using the strong form, Canada a, uh, but notice what I'm putting there. Canada or the, we're adding a ruh sound. We're adding what's called the intrusive R. I've got a full video explaining the rules on that. I'm not going to explain them here because that could take a whole like 10 minutes. But we've got an intrusive R. Canada rather. Canada rather. So take that linking sound that we have. We've got three uh, linking sounds. W, y, r. We're going to take that r that we're using here to link and we're going to add it to the beginning of the next word. R. So Canada R together. Canada R. Canada R the USA. So you see how it all links together. But no. Instead, I move to move to. So here I'm not pronouncing the D. Consonant D consonant is the same rule as up here. Yeah. First time I move to. I'm not pronouncing the D, it moved, moved to. It's quite hard to say, so we cut it. I moved to, so I'm not saying move to, ooh. Remember, we're gonna use the weak form. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say weak forms, <laughs> then I do have a video in the description talking about sentence stress. So please go and watch that video because this will make a lot more sense. So I moved to Spain. Spain during. So, nj, nj. we're connecting those together, not Spain during. Spain during. Spain during the second year. So, something interesting happens here. I'm not saying second year, I'm saying second year. Second year. So, this d, instead of saying second, it becomes a j. Second year, second year, the second year of my degree. We're going to link these together with what's now called the linking R. So we have the intrusive R and we have the linking R. A super easy way to know if it's intrusive or linking, if you care to know why <laughs> or what the difference is. If there is an R, so the letter R, R, an R, in the spelling towards the end of the word, it is a linking R. <laughs> if there is no R in the spelling, and this includes words that end like R-E, like center, the British uh, uh, way of spelling of center, right? This would be the same. This would be included in the linking R rule, all right? But it's intrusive if there is no R in the spelling. So Canada isn't spelt with an R, so it isn't considered intrusive. Okay, just a very quick uh, recap of intrusive and linking in case you're curious what the difference is. They're pronounced the same, but they just have different names because one has the spelling and one doesn't. So second year of my degree to study there. So this D and Y, I've got a video all about this. It's called assimilation. When we get this D and Y together and we combine it, it makes a J sound. This can happen in between words like second year, second year, or it can happen within words. So for example, um, education or education. I can also say edu, education. So education, education. I can do it within words as well. So that's our first paragraph. So the second paragraph. I studied in Tarragona. We're going to move that over. We're going to connect these. I studied in Tarragona. I studied in Tarragona. A city in. So like these up here where we've linked with a R, we're now going to link this with a Y 
sound. So bear in mind that this symbol here is not a j, it's not a ch, okay, if you're a Spanish speaker, <laughs> but it's a y in phonetics. Y, like yellow, yes, yesterday, okay? A city yin. So notice I'm adding that y to the beginning of the next word. I'm saying it like yin, yin. A city yin. So together, a city yin. Now here, I'm not saying a city in Catalonia. I'm not saying it with a n. The same thing that's happening here is what happened up here. Alrighty, so in Catalonia, I'm going to change this n to an ng sound. So ng like in thing, king, sing, is this ng, this vela, uh nasal sound back here, ng in Catalonia and we do that because we want to connect that nasal sound to the k in Catalonia so I'm then going to release it with the k in Catalonia I'm not saying in Catalonia but in Catalonia a city in Catalonia originally so this word I wanted to highlight it because you can say it as originally okay originally but what I'm doing is I'm cutting a syllable originally originally now I do have quite an old video that talks about when to cut syllables in words I think I need to do a more refresher video but I will put the old one in the description of this one so you can go and check out the rules for when we cut syllables in words because believe me there are rules so what I'm doing here is originally, that's all the syllables, but I'm saying originally. So I'm kind of cutting like these ones here and squishing this. It's like orig originally, it's kind of something like this. <laughs> but I just wanted to highlight that we can cut syllables in words and I have a video about that in the description. Though I need to do a remake of it, I need to do a more updated version because my microphone was terrible back then. <laughs> so originally, four syllables, I was only, move that consonant over to the beginning of the next word because it starts with a vowel, I was only supposed to cut this because it's consonant T consonant, even though it's the letter D, it is the sound T, supposed Supposta, supposta, supposta. Then we join them together. I was only supposed to, not supposed to go for, supposed to go for, to go for. We're using weak forms here. One term, join these together. One term, <laughs> one term, one term. But the, but the. The, but the coordinator, but the coordinator messed up. We're going to move that consonant over to the beginning. Up and we're going to move that consonant over again. Now, what you will find with the word and is we don't say messed up and accidentally. We're going to cut the D at the end and we're going to weaken it. We're going to use the weak form. We're going to use the schwa. Messed up an accidentally an accidentally so here it becomes a schwa messed up an accidentally then we move that consonant over to the beginning of the next word so all of this is consonants moving over <laughs> so messed up an accidentally so this word accidentally the same thing happens as originally accidentally accidentally or I can cut a syllable accidentally accidentally so I'm cutting this one here it's like we're cutting these syllables just to make life easier okay originally accidentally I can cut these syllables and accidentally put one year on the form so here I've not highlighted it but you might have noticed that when I read it slowly I probably connected it I probably did <laughs> so I can connect these again we're just going up here back to that linking R so naturally I want to link it together yes as we've got it in uh, what's it called little 
quotation marks here, speech marks, whatever. I, I don't necessarily have to connect it because I'm putting a pause there. I want to put emphasis on this so I can say, the coordinator messed up and accidentally put one year on the form. So you see how it can be read in two different ways. Messed up and accidentally put one year on the form. Messed up and accidentally put one year on the form. Naturally, I want to link it, but <laughs> just know that it can be linked. It depends how you read it, whether you want to put the stress on the one year part or not. And then on the, on the, on the form. Students used to ask me, so this here, I don't, for some reason, connect this with uh, students used to. <laughs> so here I can change this s and y to a sh. When I was reading it, I didn't really do that, uh, but I'm just highlighting it to say that you might hear some people doing it, okay? Student shoes do, student shoes do. So it becomes like a sh sound. So I just wanted to bring that up. So the other, the other students used to, or the other students used to, used to, we're gonna connect those together, used to, used to, we can also remove this da, used to, used st, st. Notice that it just goes from st to t, used to, used to ask. So we're going to change this to a more of an oo sound or like an oo. <laughs> Doesn't matter, they pretty much sound the same when they're at the end here. And we're going to link this with a w sound. So we're changing it from a t to an oo because our next word starts with a vowel sound. So used to ask, to ask, to ask. Now notice how I say this when I say the rest of the sentence. Used to ask me, used to ask me. So I'm cutting this k here. Used to ask me. Same thing as what's going on up here. Consonant, t, consonant. But you'll notice, what, Emma? We don't have a T here. <laughs> so this can happen with certain consonant clusters. So with K in this case, we've got sk. Ask can become ass. Yes, it sounds like that. <laughs> but um, to ask me, to ask me, I can cut that K in certain consonant clusters. And it would work the same if I even had the word asked. Sorry, I'm writing with my mouse. It looks like a child has written this. But anyway, I can say asked or I can say asked and I can cut that there and I can cut that ka. So to ask me, to ask me if I, so here we're gonna link it with that y again. Me if, me if, with that if. <laughs> then we take the f, move it over because the next word starts with a vowel. Me if I used to ask me if I wanted to connect together, wanted to go out with a w, go out, but I, we're going to move that over, but I didn't want to, want to, want to, we're going to connect them together, want to, or you could say it's removed, you know, technically, want to, <laughs> but anyway, they are connected. Now on to the third paragraph. So, in the second semester, in the, in the, in the second, second semester, connect those together, remove the D, it's the same as what's going on up here with consonant T, consonant, consonant D, consonant, and so on. In the second semester, I decided to, decided to make, remember not decided to, we're using weak forms, I decided to make some friends, some friends. Mm, <laughs> some friends. I decided to make some friends with some, with some. So this here, this with, it actually has two different ways to pronounce it depending on the sound that comes after. So if the next word starts with a voiced sound, so if I say like with uh, Emma, <laughs> creative, um, I went to the shop with Emma, then this here would be with the voiced th. Because Emma starts with a voiced sound, with a vowel. All vowels in English are voiced. This here is a voiceless sound. Sss, there's no vibration, no voicing. So we can actually change this to a th sound. With some, with some, with some. 
some friends with some local Catalan girls. So I'm doing the same thing as I did back up here, wherever it was, <laughs> where I changed that Catalan to Catalan, Catalan girls, Catalan girls. So this here gets changed to an ung. Local Catalan girls, they y'all. This gets changed to a ya. They y'all show, all show. So that all is what we call a dark L. We have two types of L in English. La, like lucky, and all, like in fall, where we hold it. Here's a dark L. So we're gonna hold it and then we move it to the sh. By it, I mean the tongue. <laughs> so they all sh, all sh, they all show me. We're gonna change this duh to more of a buh sort of sound, like a buh, a muh. Show me, show me. So I'm not saying like show b me, but show me. They all show me, they all show me some. So you see how it works when it's a natural speech. When it's slowed down, it sounds super weird. And when I tell students about this, even native speakers, they're like, I don't speak like that. And then I get them to say certain phrases and they're like, oh yes, I did change it. <laughs> so when you slow it down, it sounds super weird. But when you say it all at normal speed, it does start to make a bit more sense. They all show me some interesting, some interesting. We we'll move this over, some interesting. They all show me some interesting, interesting things about, we're moving that over, about the, about the, interesting things about the, culturen, we've just got that normal linking R there, culturen, culturen, remove that duh, because and is not important, poor little and, an, an, an I, an I. And I really enjoy, we've got that linking y again, because we're connecting those two vowels together. If you're not sure about these rules with linking vowels, like w, y, and r, like this one up here, I do have a full video all about it with an analysis. Enjoy my, we're gonna change this to again, more like a b sound. Now, I'm saying b, but we're not releasing it as a b. It's like with the thing I looked up before with the showed me. I don't say show me, but show me. This is the same. Enjoy my, enjoy my. And I really enjoyed my second semester. We're gonna cut this, join these together. So all together, the culture and I really enjoyed my second semester. After my year was up, I had to, so what's up, what's up. We're taking that z and moving it over because it's consonant vowel linking. I had to, had to, I had to move back to England, to England with that w sound, to wing, wing. And this sound here, a lot of students say like England because they see a n in there, an n, so they're like England, but it's an ung, okay? To wing, England, to England. Here we're gonna cut this. So we're going, I had to move back to England to England to England to. So you notice how I'm not saying England to or England to, but England to finish my degree. So remember we're using weak forms, not England to, England to. Now, 10 years later, we've got that near again. Where was it? 10 years ago, 10 years later. Years later, years later. We're connecting those together. My tongue is uh, transitioning between that z and l, z later. Now, 10 years later, I'm back. So we're not saying I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, okay? I'm back in, back in Spain, in Spain. So notice that my tongue is a moving, not in Spain, in Spain. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying connected speech. I'm back in Spain and living. So these here, Spain and living and living and living. I'm back in Spain and living in, we're moving that over, living in my, in my. So it's the same as what's going on up here with first time in my life. Living in my dream city, 
living in my dream city, Barcelona. What I now recommend you do is you rewind the video back and you go back and you listen to the first time I read it and you listen to the second time I read it, so the fast version and the slow version, and you notice how I am connecting everything together now that you've seen the analysis. If you enjoyed this video, then please let me know in the comments because I'd really like to know if this sort of video is good, if you enjoy it, if you find it helpful. Lots of people have been asking for these kinds of analyses, but... I want to know if they are actually helpful for the majority. <laughs> so let me know in the comments, please. As a very quick reminder, remember that you can use the code EMMA50 to get 50% off your first lesson on Preply. That's with me or any other teacher on the platform. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye. Oh, forgot to kiss. Bye. <laughs>